No, unfortunately. So, J- so Jadavian Clowney. No, what, he, what did, happened he didn't sign either. Uh, but I wrote about him along with some others at scorenorth.com in an article that is titled Five Splash Moves the Vikings Can Still Make because I get the sense, Sage, that they didn't just move on from Everson Griffin or he moved on from them and sort of throw up their hands and say, well, boys, I guess that's it for us here in Minnesota. (laughs) I mean, so I, I would guess they're headed into this week looking for ways that they can replace players they've lost with someone better still, even though they are short on salary cap space. And that begins with someone like Jadavion Clowney. Now, fundamentally, it is still hard to do. They have $14 million in cap space, and that's probably one year of Jadavian Clowney, but we know the Vikings can find ways to sign players to multi-year deals, lower cap hits in the first year, deal with it down the road. That's kind of how we got here, Um, but they're still doing that if you look at Michael Pierce's contract. And if they want to be good in 2020, they're going to have to add more talent, especially on the defensive line without Everson Griffin. So there is still a case to go after someone who is a big star like Jadavion Clowney, who can make a huge difference right away and put a lot of your cap space there and try to fill in other spaces. Would you think that that would be a good approach for the Vikings? Well, they have to have a a really good player at that position, you know, good to, to great, you know, having pass rushers uh, in the NFL is, is really, really important and to have two. And in particular along that, that you know what is, what is the quarterback's left side and the right side of the defense that right defense in that position that's a premier premier position uh in this sport and you know a good offense has to have a good quarterback they have to have generally a good offense line where on a defense there's certain positions they have they cannot have like a, that be a weak spot and that right defensive end uh that is a premier position to have and if they don't really have that right now they need to sign somebody or probably use them. You know, maybe this might be the first uh, pick, uh, the first round draft pick that the Vikings use. They might think that is the most important position that they, that they have to fill right now. And you could even really go both directions where you sign someone to a short term contract. And, and maybe if Clowney isn't getting the type of attention he thinks he deserves, then he could do something like come to the Vikings on a one year deal. That's what Sheldon Richardson did just uh, two years ago in 2018. Richardson felt like he wasn't getting the type of offers that he wanted. So you go to a great defensive team to play with good players around you played next to Linval Joseph and it worked out for Sheldon. He got his big contract with Cleveland. It sounds like Clowney isn't getting the type of uh, attention that he thinks he deserves. And last year, He didn't put up quite the sack numbers, but we know this, Sage. Sack numbers could be a little bit deceiving. So at his top, he's like a 9 or 10 sack guy. But last year, he was still putting pressure on it. In fact, even a better rate than he was in 2018, but he just didn't get the sacks. He had 58 pressures last season in only 482 pass rush snaps, which is about around the range of a Everson Griffin. And the other part of this, too, that would make the case for Clowney is that you need the attention uh, on yes. that side to help Daniil Hunter because that's what Everson Griffin has drawn for so long. Yes, that you know that position is extremely important. I think what Jadavian Clowney is, his numbers aren't always great, uh, but he does. He's one of those guys the offense has to pay attention to, and they have to put resources to. You know, you might have a pass pattern. You say, okay, normally we use this protection. Uh, uh, that sort of helps out our center or maybe slides us right. This week, we're going to either slide uh, to the left side there to, to help out with this guy who's just he's such a freaky athlete that you need to add extra help to him. Or maybe it's a running back with chip where you're going to put, you have to sort of game plan for, and you can be successful in taking away maybe, uh, you know, the best player on another team, a guy like Clowney, but then other guys start peeking up because they have, you know, more one-on-one blocks. And so he does take, attention and teams the game plan you know he's sort of to me reminds me of julius peppers in some way different in a sense peppers was i think a thicker stronger more stout against the run guy um and he was i, th- I think more durable for the most part but he could sort of just take over a game yeah like he has yeah. that game wrecker thing and in particular like in the playoffs it's nice to have one of those game wrecker type guys and so teams that are looking to make a run in the playoffs to have a guy who can go, okay, he's only been maybe averaged up and down throughout the season, 
but that can actually take over a playoff game in some ways. Clowney's one of the a few guys that can do that. Yeah, and I think we've seen how important it is for the Vikings in the Mike Zimmer era to be able to create pressure with four rushers that they do not blitz all that often, except for on third downs where you start to see double A gap stuff. And then he introduced zone blitzes uh, maybe two years ago, 2018. It was one of the tweaks that they made after struggling a little bit uh, on the defensive side. But for the most part, first and second down, they have been able to effectively create pr pressure for a long time. And as much as I like what Afadi Adenabo did last year, it's hard to see him stepping right in and then just doing the same thing and drawing the same amount of attention as Everson Griffin. This would make sense from that perspective. And I also think, Sage, that it makes everybody on the back end better when you can create this much pressure with your front four. And especially when you have someone like Clowney who can move around. So you have Michael Pierce at the nose tackle position, but you can move Clowney inside or you can move him to the wide spot, like way outside if he's going to pass rush and send blitzers and things like that. His versatility makes it make sense. The only question here is, is not really of the fit or is he a good player? It's, what would you do with the rest of the roster if you signed someone that's as expensive as Jadavian Clowney? And that's the thing, you know, the, the, there's the draft, of course, which is the inexpensive guys, and they have sort of allotment for that. Um, but, you know, I'm looking at this Vikings defense, and you know, generally, you know, corners in this defense and just corners in general, they a lot of times are a premium type guys, defensive ends. Uh, and the nose tackle position, those are premium players because they're just, they're just harder to find. And those happen to be a lot of holes that the Vikings have currently. I mean, it's sort of a little bit of a scary place to be. And it's like, you know, shoot, where can you find, sign one expensive guy then try to fill the other three or four gaps possibly with, with drafted guys? Um, there's, there's, this defense needs, needs players, needs, needs some good players at important positions. And so, yeah, I mean, adding Clowney is huge, but they, they need corners too. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, there's only so many uh, dollars in the salary cap and, and the Vikings are there. I think they're in a really, a really tough spot right now. All right. So I have five of these splash moves. That's the first one. And I want you to just vote yay or nay on each move. So that's the first one. Jadavian Clowney, yay or nay. Um, If you can get him for a one year deal. Um, no, I, I actually, I think it, we, we need to have somebody for maybe a longer period. I don't think you, you put all the, the dollars into just this year and you know, try to get somebody, uh, you know, one of the current guys, and then and get they're going to get their shot this year, and that's just going to be the thing. And and maybe we'll find a diamond in the rough of somebody that doesn't get, uh, you know, those reps. But I think I'd rather try to spread my resources out because this team does need a whole bunch of starters. Okay, I tend to agree on that. That there is a case to have Jadavian Clowney, but if you have to put that much money into one player, and plus you think about who your defensive ends were in the past. Um, or even currently with Daniil Hunter, Mike Zimmer's been able to develop them. Uh, Everson Griffin's a fourth round pick who's a rotational rusher. He turns into a four-time pro bowler. Daniil Hunter, one of the best players in the NFL. You should believe in your ability to do that as we saw uh, Afadi Adenabo become a good player. Steven Weatherly got $6 million a year to go to another team because he was developed so well here in Minnesota. So they should be able to do that. It's just that you're not going to easily replace Everson Griffin, but I tend to agree that that one would probably be a pass for me. All right, next move. We've talked about this a few times. We've kicked it around a little bit, but trading for Trent Williams. No one is trading for Trent Williams, which tells me that the price is not going to be super high at this point. Maybe a third round pick. You got two of them. Maybe it's not even that because Trent Williams does not want to play for Washington and he wants a lucrative extension. You could lower the cap hit for the first year, take a bigger cap hit later on. He is currently 31 years old. So you're taking that risk. He has had some injuries in the past, but has also sat out a year to be able to heal up. And of course, I think this would go along with them moving on from Riley Reef. So, you know, I like this from the perspective, Sage, that if you're going to win with Kirk Cousins, you have to protect him. And this guy, even if he's on the older side, has been one of the best in the NFL at pass protection for his entire career. He's a he's a great player. There's only so many, you know, really, really good, you know, left tackles. And and again, uh, you know, how much is salary you know, they're gonna have to give up, I would think. Um somewhat of a higher pick. I, I don't think it's, you can get him for a fifth or sixth rounder, uh, at least not yet. Uh, so, you know, the, the question is how many dollars do the Vikings have and, 
course, he's probably going to want, I would think, some sort of new contract, which would be a, I would think, a big contract. And this is probably the last contract of his career. So he's really looking to probably get every dollar he can. So I just think it's going to be, that'd just be a really, really hard thing to pull off. Uh, listen, this, this team needs some some really good players added to it. I just don't know if the Vikings have the the salary cap room to you know make big big uh, trades or sign signings like this. So let me work this out for you because I think it's not quite as bad with Trent Williams as it sounds. Because with a Jadavian Clowney signing, you don't have anyone at that position to create any more cap space. But in this one, you can move on from Riley Reef to improve significantly by plugging in Trent Williams, and Reef creates eight million dollars in cap space on his own. So if you were taking on Williams and then signing him to extension, you could sign him to an extension that has a, a fairly decent first year cap hit, and maybe you're only adding to your cap by $6 million in the first year or $4 million in the first year. And then of course, yeah, you're kicking the can down the road, but that's exactly what this team has done with everything. Even their restructure for Daniel Hunter recently. And even with Kirk Cousins contract, they're kicking it down the road. So if they're going to do that with other deals, then it, you know, they could manage it with this one as well. Yeah. I'm just, I think I'm at the point where the kicking the can down the road has left us in the spot where this team's in, in need of four premier position starters on mm -hmm. the you know the the defensive side of the football that's that's to me too much kicking the can down the road and at some time at some point you have to sort of pay for that right and I, you know i think that just to continue to kick it is just going to make the matters worse at some point you sort of have to put an end to it and hopefully find a guy that, again that's younger or somewhere in the draft and maybe some random six round you, you go after a freak athlete that's from some smaller school or something that didn't get uh you know wasn't a combine guy or something ends up being a good player, you, you, you know, you have to try to find some diamonds in the rough this year, whether it's cheaper in free agency, some guy who did not fit well in someone else's scheme and, and you think he'd fit well in this scheme, something like that. But um, it's just a, it's hard to give up that much again. And again, I, I'm just not a big kicking the can down the road type of guy. I know, it, you know, Pittsburgh did for a long, long time. And I feel like it sort of all came up to, to bite him in the tail. These, these last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. And uh, that's why I have been looking more at a 2021 type of approach. I'm not sure that they are though. And, I, and I'm not sure that Mike Zimmer and Rick Spielman are really in a position to say 2021 or 2022, that's our year. And 2022 is when Kirk Cousins has a $45 million cap hit. And even if they go to a 17 game schedule, that is still taking up about 15% of the salary cap. And and that's where it's hard to figure would, this would, out. Would you think would you think that the Stefan Diggs deal of um, going out and getting a whole bunch of draft picks? All right, for I got user, you know, you, you hate to not have a really good player on your team, but you did need a whole bunch of draft picks. Did that make you think that this team should be and needs to be going younger, or not, and 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 on the same element like they they're trying to sort of win now at the same time, and it's just a hard sort of balance to, you know, just trying to figure out what that is. I think, I think yeah. it's sort of media people are trying to, what, ex I mean, I did a couple of radio shows, uh, you know, last late last week and like, what exactly are the Vikings doing? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't really know because, you know, I'm not a GM, never been a GM, but I'm trying to figure it out because they've, you know, extended the quarterback. They think he's the guy, which means they, they think this window can be pushed further at the same time, just gave up a really good player to get draft picks, which is more of a, for the future thing. It's hard for guys to come in and play right away and maybe get one or two, but it's hard to have, you know, five guys come in as rookies and start. And they definitely have some holes to fill. Well, what you're hitting on is exactly right. And exactly how I feel too, is trying to figure out which direction you're going when you trade away one of your best players in his prime, even if he's not happy, when you move on from that type of guy, it starts to make us think, okay, well, you're going to rebuild. But when you sign cousins to an extension that says you're trying to win now. And if, if you had nobody at the quarterback position and Kirk cousins was a free agent at this moment, you wouldn't be the team to try and sign him because you don't have so many other positions. You would want to have one of those transition Ryan Fitzpatrick quarterbacks at this moment that was fairly cheap and you could start to build the pieces back around him. So that's why I can't really put a, a finger on it either, Sage. And that's why I kind of went through this list of like, could they make splash moves to try to be competitive in 2020, even though it's not easy. And that's where I come to Trent Williams and think, well, what's the biggest thing that could make Kirk Cousins better? You made him worse by getting rid of Stephon Diggs. Well, what could make him better? And a left tackle is that, even if it's not the most shrewd move. Yeah, and, you know, he's got uh, 
uh, you know, what, nine years of experience and, and, and he's, you know, he's played a while. So, uh, you know, I'm wondering what he wants as far as a long-term deal. Would he want like a three-year deal, mm-hmm. four-year deal, something? Cause he, you know, most of the guys in this situation, of course, want that big extension. That's what they're really looking for. Doesn't want to be in Washington anymore. Wants to get the heck out of there. Um, and, you know, much less sort of the draft capital also, uh, third round or fourth round or whatever that might be to, to you know, try to get him. So there's, there's just a, a, there's a lot of wants, and I don't know if we have enough resources to uh, even try to make something like this happen, because we'd have just fewer and fewer resources to fill those other major holes in, in this uh, on this football team. Okay, let me give you a few more of these ideas, and I feel like you're going to shoot them down. So that's a, you vote nay on Trent Williams. Uh Yes, because I'm the, the extension is is tough. I mean, I'd love to have him. I'd love to have Trent Williams on the team. I'd love to have uh, Jadavian Clowney on, on the Madden. Team I'd sign well. both. I would, uh, yeah, I would make great, it very easy right. on the video game. Um, I mean, you you are right in the sense, by the way, that you know if you can help out Kirk Cousins in one way, have a great left tackle because you, then if he's not worried about that spot a lot, he'll become even a better quarterback, uh, and he'll have more time and. And those types of things, and you know that's only a, a good thing. He doesn't do as well when he doesn't have time. Obviously, very few quarterbacks do, mm-hmm. but he he definitely doesn't. And so, you know, I can see if you want to sort of build your team around Kirk Cousins, you got to give him a uh, you know a, a great left tackle. All right, let me move on to the next idea, which is to trade Anthony Harris as opposed to playing him on the franchise tag if he would would even play. I think he wants an extension too. So trade him away for a draft pick. You get his eleven million dollars of cap space putting you up to 25 million and you spend that cap space on cornerback Logan Ryan and Dominican Sue and receiver Robbie Anderson. So you get a, a kind of a poor man, Stefan Diggs replacement, a really dominant interior defensive lineman and a veteran starting cornerback. Who's pretty well proven. No, he's not one of the best in the league, but he's good. Um, that would fill out the roster quite a bit more, but you would have to lose Anthony Harris to be able to do it. And all of these players can continue to play for a while. Ryan and, and Anderson are not old at all. Sue probably has years left. And uh, you would probably have to sign them to multi-year deals for each of them. Do you like that? I do like that deal because, uh, you know, again, I don't think they can sign Anthony to a long-term deal and, and just the one year in play. I still think this team's in the position like, okay, we're, we're going to sign this guy to a one-year deal. And after that, we're going to let him go for basically no compensation because I just, this doesn't feel like the year they're going to win the Super Bowl. It just doesn't feel like that. Yep. You know, it's, it's maybe next year or somewhere down the line. Uh, just this team doesn't feel like that uh, to me right now. So I would trade him. I think this about, I, I'm all about acquiring picks. Um, and, and, you know, Diggs's deal was different because he had a lot of years left on his contract. Um, but, you know, with Anthony, if you can get some, some picks for him and that, that end up being starters, this team needs starters, and uh, I got to think they can find another good safety somewhere uh, that's that's fairly inexpensive, mm-hmm. or even maybe that's a, that's also a guy that they, they they draft in the mid rounds, and with one of these picks that could be cheap for the next four years at the free safety position. What you could do by filling multiple spots with good free agents, and you know that comes with creating space through trading Anthony Harris, is you can really focus yourself on what you need for the draft. So if you get Logan Ryan and Dominican Sue and Robbie Anderson, you still need a wide receiver for sure, but you don't have the same level of desperation that you have to spend a first round pick. You could spend a second round pick instead and get still a pretty good prospect, but you're not having to reach on one. If it's the first round and a couple of others go off the board and you know that you're going to have to draft a left tackle, but you won't have to draft the three technique defensive tackle. You know, you might have to draft a defensive end, but you've got the the cornerback. The first cornerback spot is filled. Again, you don't have to be desperate in the first round because you know you have still Mike Hughes and you might be able to draft one later. So, you know, I, I guess that would be where I would put it, Sages. You have to probably get three to four free agents still to fill spots to feel like you could go into that first and second round where usually you can get starters right away um, and at least be able to plug them in. You, you have to have at least three or four spots filled to even go into the draft and feel like you know what you're supposed to get there, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, they, they need to sign. I don't know what the exact number is, but as you're saying, probably sign two to three guys that will end up being starters this year, and they need to draft two, maybe three guys that end up being starters this year. I bet that's the way I you know sort of see it. Um, so you will, we'll know a heck of a lot more about who the Vikings draft are, are going to draft in those first couple of rounds. I sort of feel like this year, 
when we get through free agency and we get to the draft that we will know they're either going to draft a this or a this. Yes. Like they're yes. going to have to, yep. they're going to have to draft a, a corner. They're going to have to draft the second wide receiver to MP and they're going to have to draft uh, you know, a defensive end with that first or second round pick. You know, we, we may not know the first, but if we don't, if they pick someone on the first, we'll probably know the second. And I just think they are going to go draft need and not just necessarily draft, uh, you know, best athlete. Yes. And I think they're going to probably have a good three needs to start when the draft starts, uh, whenever it is end of end of April uh, or whenever the draft is this year. So you give thumbs up on the idea of signing three free agents and moving on from Anthony Harris. Yes. I think that, uh, you know, any, I, I think that anytime you can get sort of two for one or three for one, as in like two starters for, as in like two good draft picks. Like I think, I think with, Ant, with uh, Stefan Diggs, they might get two starters out of that deal. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, so that's, a, that's sort of a two for one scenario. So if you can get, two starters and and also under you know inexpensive contracts or longer contracts than what anthony harris is was i think that'd be a, a good business decision for the vikings okay the next one i got two more and we'll do these quick and then we have hot routes and lots to talk about in hot routes um trade riley reef and sign jason peters so you get a late round draft pick for riley reef no one's giving you a first or second let's say you get a fourth or fifth and you sign jason peters he's there for a year you draft a left tackle you into that I am into that. Jason Peters is awesome. He's a I mean, monster. I think, he, I think he's still a good player, and I think I like that sort of spot where you have him play left tackle, then you find some guy, you know, maybe some, you know, try to find a bigger athlete that's super raw, and have him basically, and you can maybe find those in a in a later round. Guy that went to maybe a smaller school or something. He's got good feet, but he just truly needs a, a sort of a, a red shirt year. And what better guy to learn from? than Jason Peters. And, and I think that I like that as a, as a pick as a true development guy and sort of a red shirt. And maybe it's a guy who's a fourth or fifth rounder, who's got all the size and to be a dominant player, but just has you know been poorly coached or something like that has a long ways to go uh, as far as learning the game. And so, I, you know, Jason Peters, I think he, he's still a very, very good player. Yep. Fourth best by PFF in pass protection last season, even though he's 38 years old he's just philadelphia by the way as you know philadelphia for years has you know andy reed when he was there or they've just done a great job of stealing players from other teams i mean he was a a second round trade and how that happened i don't know but they stole him from the buffalo bills i believe right it was a contract thing uh peter's a new contract no contract and and, then buffalo gave for a second rounder (laughs) yeah and he's going to go the to the guys, Hall of Fame. He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. And, but Philadelphia has done that occasionally here and there. They've just gotten really good deals on guys at the right time and things fell through. They do a good, good job as anybody of sort of finding these these trades that end up being very, very pro Philly uh, that, you know, the Vikings could definitely use a, a, some sort of trade like that. All right. I'll let uh, listeners go to scorenorth.com to see the other one because we got to hit a break here and details on the five splash moves the Vikings could still make, even though they are in a really tough spot with the salary cap, but they are not dead last in salary cap space anymore. So they can make some moves and we would expect some things to happen within the next week or so.